it is a new era in some ways of the NFL. It's a new era in some ways. We have a interesting season ready to begin. We have a game on Thursday night. We have a game for the first time in quite some time, a game on Friday night, a full slate Sunday and Monday night. It's going to be one jam-packed NFL season, and I'm here to give you some of the worst predictions of all time because that is how I do and talk about week one in general um, because this this season is going to be one of the most interesting seasons in recent memory. We have Tom Brady, first off, joining the NFL booth. We have Netflix. Netflix of all places. Yes, CBS is producing the games, but Netflix is getting into the NFL business. Amazon's getting a playoff game. It's a wild time. The, the foundation of the NFL is, is changing. It's changing in ways that... that and, and so the, the changes, you know, the changes, I have to pause for a second, the changes in the NFL are just kind of, you know, crazy. Crazy, 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 continuously crazy. And it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. We got... We got team, you know, basically just restructuring. We got guys going every which way. And everything in the NFL continues to go crazy, crazy, crazy. And it's going to be an interesting season, I think. On paper, I'll give you my predictions. Um, and I, I know my fellow Cowboys fans, you're probably not going to like some of what I'm going to say. But we'll talk about it and everything like that um, throughout the season, you know, because, again, Cowboys fans, my fellow Cowboys fans, I'm just going to be real with you. We're probably not making the playoffs. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you my NFC playoff teams and everything like that in just a little bit. But let's let's talk about these games first. And we start with the defending champions, the defending back-to-back -back champions. No, you know, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. You know, Patrick Mahomes is just, you know, back. And, uh, I mean – it, it, it's it's going to be an interesting year to see if this Chiefs team can repeat. They've lost some pieces. They've gained some pieces. But at the core of it all, it's still Patrick Mahomes. Meanwhile, on the other side, Baltimore added Derrick Henry, which is an interesting add, a very good add, I might say. And that should lessen the load on Lamar Jackson, you know, because a lot of people will say, oh, well, he runs the ball too much for a quarterback, and yada, yada, yada. He's doing everything. Uh, I think – I think having a workhorse like Henry in the backfield should, you know, it won't give Lamar the MVP this year. It will definitely not give him the MVP, but it will give it will give him some much needed less stress, you know, on himself. And I think if everything goes right for Baltimore, they should have another good year in Brazil, which is crazy to me. Crazy that this game is in Brazil, but the Packers. And the Eagles, two teams that I think will be, you know, doing some damage this year in some shape or form. Um, the Eagles, you know, still have Jalen Hurts. They do not have a very good defense, though, and that should allow Jordan Love and, and this Packers team that has built around Jordan Love to, you know, put up some damage, put up a fight. Should be an interesting game on Peacock, of course. So you have a, have a game on Peacock. Of course, Brazil doesn't have, you know, Twitter, so there's that, you know. Uh, but again, this is an Eagles defense that the main – that's the main story is, is Jordan Love going to torch this Eagles defense. We'll find out. Uh, Josh Jacobs is on one side of the pack, and the Eagles signed Saquon Barkley of all guys. I know. I know. But again, this this is an interesting game because the Eagles still have a lot of their offensive weapons. But at the same time, it, again, it's just that defense I'm really worried about, and that's what I'm mainly going to be focused on worrying about this year for the Eagles. Steelers and the Falcons, however, as we start our Sunday slate, is going to be something. It is going to be something. I do not think either of these teams are going to do too well, you know, but – one team is going to do just enough, and the other is going to do just enough as well. 
Well, one team is going to do just enough this year, and the other is probably going to have another middle league season. But yeah, Kirk Cousins is Atlanta's quarterback, and Pittsburgh has Russell Wilson. And I mean, Kirk Cousins towards ACL, Russell Wilson had has basically just regressed over the past like two years. And it's been really rough to watch. It's been really sad to watch when you have guys like, you know, you have guys like Russell Wilson just regressing like this. Why the Falcons draft Michael Penix Jr. will never understand, but it, it's happening. Um, and then Pittsburgh, you know, still has TJ Watt. So good luck. Good luck, Kirk. Good luck, Kirk. Now the Falcons, I, I, they have they have stuff they have stuff there, but it's like the South is so weak that you know Atlanta can muster up a good season out of it. In my personal opinion, the Titans and the Bears. The Titans are basically in rebuilding mode at this point. Like you no know, Derrick Henry, a bad offense last year, a defense that was you know okay at best last year, and a Bears team that. You know, it's actually looking pretty decent with, with Caleb Williams at, at, at starting quarterback. And I know there's a lot of hype surrounding this team with, you know, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore on, on, on the offensive side. And then you have Romeo Dunze, DeAndre Swift, Cole Komet. I mean, there's a lot of pieces around Caleb Williams, but it, it's going to come down to Caleb Williams to play the game the way it's meant to be played. And, you know, again, this is a this is a Chicago team that, you know, is trying to, you know, get rid of get rid of the past mistakes and, you know, amend, make amends for the past mistakes of old. But at the same time, it's still Chicago. I, I should be expecting some absolute foolishness throughout the season. I don't. I genuinely don't know what in the world Tennessee's going to do because you know uh, I just I just I just don't see it. Tennessee again is going to be in a heavy division where they will probably be the team that is last in a very very heavy um, you know um, AFC South. I just I just don't know, man. I just don't know how this year is going to go for them. So, you know, we, we got we got a long season. We got a long season. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, Jacksonville. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Indianapolis is going to be okay. You guys should have six easy wins. I know. I know. Um, but, yeah, Tennessee, I, I just don't have high hopes for them this year. Miami Jacksonville should be a fun one. I, I think I, I think you know with the Trevor Lawrence extension, things should be there, there, there should be something. There should be something. Miami, on the other hand, still looking like a, a offense that you know has speed all over the place. To what talk about Lowe is back, of course. There, there's just there's just lots on the line for this one because both these quarterbacks have massive massive extensions and uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be fun it's going to be really really fun definitely one of the more underrated games of the weekend that not everybody will be watching cuz only like certain parts of the country will be getting it on their you know national television screens and stuff like that so yeah yeah um yeah for the for some of these other games, you have a yeah, you have some interesting stuff going on here. Let me tell you, let me tell you, you have some interesting stuff going on. You know, Houston, Indianapolis, CJ Stroud versus AR15 should be a lot of fun. It's gonna this that that's the game that's gonna be on locally for me. You know, pair that up with Pittsburgh, Atlanta, which is also going to be local for me. And it should be, you know, one of the more interesting games of this, you know, of this early NFL season. The Cardinals, they have Kyler Murray back, but the Cardinals are in rebuilding mode. All they really have left is Ky Kyler and Buda Baker. Cardinals are terrible. Buffalo, 
basically lost all their weapons and all they have is Josh Allen. And I don't know if that's going to be enough this year, to be quite honest with you. I really don't know if that is going to be enough this year because they lost a lot of their weapons. They gained some new ones, but they lost a lot of weapons. So I don't know how this game is going to go, to be quite honest with you. Joe Burrow in Cincinnati? Yeah. Yeah, it's still Cincinnati. It's still a JoJo and Joe show, you know. With 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 I mean with with this with this interesting New England Patriots team led by Gerard Mayo, I, I, I don't think New England will be able to do anything this year again. A loaded AFC East, to be quite honest with you, very very loaded to the point where I think it, you know there there could be some there could be a lot of playoff teams from the AFC East this year somehow, but yeah. Um, Jacksonville, Miami, we already went over. Carolina, New Orleans. Bryce Shug is back at the quarterback spot for Carolina. New Orleans, uh, I mean, Derek Carr, does that, does that name strike fear into the hearts of men? Not particularly, to be quite honest with you. New Orleans has had issues for years. They, they Once they lost Drew Brees, they, they've gone, they've regressed Basically, back to being just completely mid. You know, it's not even like bad. It's just, it's just painfully middling. But New Orleans should be able to pick up the victory here. Carolina is terrible, terrible team. Sam Darnold is going to be the new quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, which is crazy. The the Giants, you know, Daniel Jones, no Saquon. A team that's still, you know, very much trying to find its footing in the NFC East should be should be one of those well, definitely not a matchup that you should miss out on. But ultimately, it's a matchup that I don't think will make too much sense. And then, of course, the Vegas Raiders and the LA Chargers. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Jim Harbaugh is back in the NFL. He is back in the NFL. He's got Justin Herbert ready to go. He's got a, 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 a Chargers team that, you know, had aspirations of making the playoffs, you know, last year and everything like that and had aspirations of, you know, doing damage. And, and they're taking on Gartner Minshew. Gartner Minshew, I know. The real story is about Harbaugh coming back, but it, it's crazy that the Raiders said, all right, we're starting Gardner Minshew, a quarterback. Denver, you know, is trotting out Bo Nix as the starter, which is, it's 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 certainly a choice. Mike McDonald is now the head coach for Seattle. Geno Smith. Should 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 you know should, he should be able to you know you know take care of business against Denver, but I don't know about Seattle this year. I think there's some things they gotta you know really work on. I think you know at the end of the day, there's gonna be some stuff here. There's gonna be some stuff that uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it's gonna be a weird year to be completely honest with you. And, and the Dallas Cowboys, my Dallas Cowboys, will be taking on the Cleveland Browns. You know, defense is banged up a little bit. The Browns, you know, have Deshaun Watson still. C.D. Lamb took the entire offseason. You know, at least it's not Brandon Ayuk, but took the entire offseason to get him back on his contract. And, I mean, they the Cowboys made some questionable decisions, like signing Dalvin Cook and Zeke Elliott back. Like, you, you're joking with me, right? You're You're really joking with me. All right. Okay. But, yeah, this should be one of the more intriguing games. I don't know why this game is in the late afternoon, but it just is because the the world mandates that all Cowboy games should be at 325 or later for some reason, and I hate that. I always hate too many games that are at 325. I really don't like, I really don't like late games, to be quite honest with you. I, I'm, I'm anti-late games. For the Dallas Cowboys, I've always been that way. Washington, Tampa Bay? Hmm. 
spicy matchup, to be quite honest with you. A spicy matchup. Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, still trying to still trying to, you know, find their footing and get get themselves in a position where they can get back to the playoffs. But at the same time, you know, at the same time, I think I think this Tampa Bay team, you know, ball weaker than they were last year. And they're, they're facing Jay. They're facing Jay Daniels, another rookie, in his first start, and the Commanders are not going to have a good year. To be quite honest with you, they're not going to have a good year. I'm just going to be real with y'all. They're not going to have a good year. That should be uh, something to pair up with in the late window if you feel like it. Um, Rams Lions in the Sunday night game. Yeah, Matthew Stafford versus Jared Goff. Oh boy. Oh boy. This could have massive implications all over it. This game could decide the NFC, to be quite honest with you. It it's one of those games where it's like, oh my goodness. Just the storylines of Stafford returning to Detroit. No Aaron Donald. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. That Definitely one of the best games of the weekend, to be quite honest with you. We got a loaded weekend starting tomorrow with the Kansas City Baltimore game. And then last but not least, Aaron Rodgers returns as a New York Jet, you know, for the first time since he tore his ACL and you know sat out the season after four plays. And then San Francisco, you know, Trent Williams took forever to sign, Ayuk took forever to sign. A lot of guys are still here, but it's going to be a lot of money cost to them in the near future because, you know, Brock Purdy is going to need to be paid very soon. He's going to need to be paid very soon, too, you know, and people are like, well, he's not worried about it. Brock even said himself, oh, I'm not worried about it. I, I can get my 900 k I'm not worried about it. But at the same time, the way he's been playing has been really, really good football. It's been some good football. Like are you like are y'all joking with me right now or are y'all joking with me right now? So yeah, I, I know the spread lines and everything like that, but I don't feel like putting them up. And everything like that. But now let's get into my predictions for this year. So starting off with the MBP, I think it should be no surprise. Um, well, it should be a surprise to some of you, but. As we all know, the MVP race for the NFL has been basically a QB award for the longest time. Like Christian McCaffrey should have won it last year, to be quite honest with you. But you know what? I, I'm not even going to be mad anymore. So I'm going to just stay with something that, you know, is proven to be a, as not as bad as I think. And I think Tua will talk about Loa with the weapons that he has that will be able to. You know, with the speed of this offense, we'll be able to win the MVP this year. He will win the MVP. And not only will the Miami Dolphins win the MVP, you know, will they'll have their MVP quarterback. They will win the AFC East this year. And I thought very, very hard on this. I really did. I thought very, very hard. I know it kind of looks a little weird, you know, in some instances, but at the same time, I think Miami will take the East. Baltimore will take the North. Kansas City will take the West. Houston will take the South. Cincinnati will be a wild card. The Jets will be a wild card. And the Chargers, led by Jim Harbaugh, will be a wild card as well. Don't expect, you know, things to get too insane. The Kansas City, the Chiefs will still win the West, but it will be a lot closer this year than it has been in the years past. It will be a lot closer. Due to Harbaugh, you know, the way he coaches, he, he he coaches a good game, you know, like he was in the NFL, he got to the Super Bowl, you know, went in his time, in his first stint in the NFL, you know, with the 49ers, his first big stint anyway, the 49ers, and he, he can build a team, and if he can build a team around Justin Herbert, you know, that is successful, then boy, 
And again, I was I was tempted to pick Buffalo, but again, I think Buffalo has lost too many pieces, and you can't just have a quarterback do it by by themselves at this point. Like, oh, I'm sorry, Buffalo. I'm sorry. You can't. You can't do that. For the NFC, um, it's a little it's a little bit weirder, kinda. Not really. Like six of the seven teams you see here made the playoffs last year. And again, um. Again, it was it's it's way too easy for San Francisco to win the World West. I, I think it's way too easy, but I think you know some other teams that might be right there, like Seattle and Dallas, like they'll just barely miss the playoffs. Dallas, I'm, I'm convinced will go nine and eight. I'm convinced they will go nine and eight this year. I'm really convinced by that. Nobody's talking about the Cowboys. Um, like I said last year, you know, like I said, I said Cowboys last year would you know probably you know maybe make the divisional round last year, but they ended up losing the wild card round. Like just don't like those signings they did, the the way things have been, I just don't care. I just don't I just don't care like that this year. I care, but at the same time, I just think we're gonna barely miss out. And I think Tampa Bay, and again it was hard to, to decide that last seed because again there really should be seven seeds in the NFL playoffs, but there is anyway. So it was kind of hard. It was really hard for me. Like the Rams, that that's easy. Detroit, Atlanta with Kirk Cousins, you know, will be the most consistent team out of the South because the South is not a good division this year in the NFC. San Francisco out west, Philly out east, again, and Detroit with the absolute monstrous roster that they put together will be out north. And you're probably wondering, well, what kind of Super Bowl are we getting I'm thinking we get Kansas City, Detroit this year. I'm thinking this will be the year Detroit goes to the Super Bowl. However, however, I know what you're just, I know what you're probably gonna think. Detroit will get their first Super Bowl. No, no, those dastardly Chiefs will three I think, I think we're heading towards it. <laughs> In some way, like somehow Mahomes is going to work his magic and we're going to get a Kansas City 3 P. Maybe I'm completely wrong on that. I might be completely wrong, but you never know because that's just the way the NFL is. The One of the most unpredictable playoffs, you know, in all the major sports. Like I get MLB, you know, has its own thing. NHL is the most unpredictable and NBA is the most predictable, but the NFL playoffs are very unpredictable. Yeah, you can get two-time champions and stuff like that and crazy things happening, but the parity of the NFL is unmatched. You know, the parity of the NFL is unmatched. 32 teams in the NFL, you know, like even a bottom feeder could be the top team at, at the end of the day, and it, and, it, and it actually, you know, makes sense. Like it doesn't make sense in the MLB. It doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't make sense. In the NBA, it doesn't make sense in the NHL too much, but every game counts. Every one of these 17 games in the NFL counts so much. The magnitude of 256, well, 272 games, they count so much. So from me to you, what are your predictions for the NFL this year? I, I'm I'm just going to be real like this these predictions right here may be fluid throughout the season, Complete to be completely honest with you. Like my college football predictions are going to be very much fluid. Maybe I'll revisit my college football predictions at the midway point. I'm probably going to do that anyway. That same thing with the NFL, probably like week eight or week nine. Probably going to revisit my predictions because I, I, I don't know right now, man. I don't know. I'm going I'm to do my mid-season. I'm going to do mid-season predictions this year. I'm going to do that. So for me to you, Big Boy Sports is signing on out, and I will see you all later. You know, we're going to talk, you know, more football, you know, over the next couple weeks. Going to sprinkle in some volleyball in there. Going to sprinkle in some WNBA. Going to sprinkle in some lacrosse. Going to sprinkle it all in there over the next couple weeks in September. So happy September. Hope you enjoyed your Labor Day off like I did. And I'm going to get on about here. Again, tell me your predictions in the comments or in other posts that I'll make over the next, over the rest of the week. So until then, bye y'all.